Well, here we are, here we are. This is just a planning video, but I think you know what's coming. There's a bit of a clue. <laughs> yes, indeedy. We're gonna dig out old pointy. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. Um, so the flight I would like to do is the one that we've just done, but in an A321. Ah, poet, and I don't know it. Um, yes, we're gonna do the Concord Heathrow to Larnaca Cyprus flight. Um, that's the one I want to do. We will probably do a full rotation. Um, don't expect the video, the flight videos, um, to be <laughs> like back to back. Um, you'll see from hopefully if you've watched some of my older videos where we've flown all pointy, there's a lot that goes into uh getting this bird off the ground, and it's not it's worlds apart from the Airbus where you flick a button, the engines start, and it's all done, and and you hit autopilot, and away you go. Um, very very different in old points. You check out some of the older videos. Okay, they're they're not quite as polished as the ones that I'm doing these days are. Not that these are particularly well polished, but uh, you'll see the difference. But you get the idea. So, the flight Heathrow to Cyprus. Clearly. If we wanted to do this route like we did in the A A three eight A uh, three twenty one, where we sort of flew over well, pretty much this arc actually very very similar. Okay, we're following our way, so it's a bit zigzaggy, um, but certainly over sort of Austria, Slovenia, Serbia, uh, Kosovo, blah blah blah. That's no good in Concord. Why? Because we can't go supersonic over populated land certain bits of land it could go supersonic over certain bits of russia china so on so forth it did go supersonic over there um but certainly not over europe where it's reasonably well populated um no good whatsoever so this route is no good concord had its own special route for this uh for this journey it's a real world journey obviously not flying now um but it basically took advantage of what well, i don't even know what this is oh the adriatic sea of course uh down to the ionian sea and came round the bottom did this sort of weird route through the sea definitely not a straight line definitely further but concord can go rather quick over water so that extra distance um, the time it takes to do that extra distance is massively offset by doing twice the speed of sound. More, possibly more importantly, actually, um, Concorde flying subsonic is horrifically inefficient. Like, oh, the fuel burn is insane compared to supersonic. Burns less fuel supersonic than it does subsonic. Get your head round that. Going four or five times slower burns more fuel. <laughs> so not only are you going to be burning it for four or five times more because it takes you longer, so you're in the air for longer, but you're also burning more fuel than you would be doing if you were going faster and getting there quicker and burning it for a fewer number of minutes. Really, really interesting stuff. So we have a company route that BA flew, uh, and if we do a we switch a route in PFPX, this is what that route looks like. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do some of that. So we come out of Heathrow. Uh, actually, two seven left will be departing off. Uh, Concorde have permissions to do that. Coming from Terminal Four, uh, so we'll see that. That that'll be good. Um, Fly over cock, of course, you have to fly over cock. Uh, yeah, you're not going to see this text, I don't think, unless you uh, engage squint mode and zoom mode. Um, and we fly over Europe. Now, I've had to amend the flight plan slightly because some of the airways don't exist anymore. Um, so there's a few directs and things, uh, particularly over southwest Germany, um, 
the, the airways it, it was trying to send us on a bit of a loop de loop uh, which is a bit weird so if i have to stick a few directs in theory air traffic should be happy with that um but yeah we'll we'll see what happens anyway um <clears throat> And the important bit is once we get to uh, Vicenza or Vicen, Vic, Vic uh, here, that's our point where we then start climbing. Um, Concorde, interestingly, when it's subsonic, is capped at around about flight level 240, might be 270, something around there anyway. Certainly can't do flight level 340. Um, so we're actually quite low in the thicky, soupy air. Um, and flying subsonic, so it's it's really inefficient anyway. Let alone the engines being pretty dire at that uh, that speed. Um, so we're low and sl slow for Concorde, low and slow all the way over uh, Belgium, over uh, Germany, through over the this west little nubbin nubbin of uh, Austria, um, down through north and Italy, and then we get out to sea. Then we like kick the tires, light the fires. Three, two, one, now, boom, boom, and up we get to. Um, probably won't get up to flight level six hundred, uh, but that's what we'll be shooting for uh, in a nice supersonic climb all the way around the bottom of Greece, round past um, the south side of uh, Crete. Um, and then our decel point is going to be around about here-ish, something like that. Um, so we decel down to subsonic and then just lawn dart it uh, straight into Larnaca. I fixed my Larnaca scenery, by the way. I fixed it, so it is now working. So I want to show you some of the planning stuff. Um, PFPX, I have uh, Concorde flight profiles in here that you can download them from. I can't remember where I got it from. Probably the FS Labs website. I don't know. It might not have been. Um, now then, what I really want to do is do a bit of zoom in the end so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So let me just do a bit of on the fly. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Engage squint mode. Yeah. Alrighty. Not elegant, but should do the job. So we are Speedy Birdie 1582, 1582. God, why did I go American? Speedy, Speedy Birdie 1582. Um, actually, we'll be going off 27 left, but meh, whatever. Uh, dispatch remarks, conk. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this flight is done on a Wednesday, or was done on a Wednesday, departing at uh, 1000 Zulu. Um, so 10 o'clock in the morning. Or 11 o'clock if we're in British summertime. Um, roughly 3 hours 20 minutes. As you'll see when we actually do this flight, <laughs> the majority of that time is this bit over Europe. Um, once we get you know, um, to the point where we can go supersonic, this bit happens very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, there's some supersonic cruise y blah -de -blah -de stuff in here and some numbers. Only 30 passengers. Um, didn't really think that through. I just hit random. Uh, should have probably taken a few more. But uh, anyway, that's what I've done. Special fuel policy for Concorde. And uh, nothing in the cost. And there's our route in here. Now, what you'll notice uh, is there's quite a few... DCTs, quite a few directs, um, they are where airways don't exist um, anymore for what we wanted to do. So I've just stuck in um, directs. The only waypoint I've added is ZX um, because the direct around where was ZX is there. You know, then once we're on ZX, then we can actually join an airway that's in use these days. Oh, huh. Realize I'm off screen. Uh, Zebix is here, um, so yeah, we we can then actually join an airway, and hopefully it'll just not upset air traffic too too much. Oh no, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, I've clicked the wrong thing. There we go. Um, so yes, and as it says here, we've increased the distance uh, over what would be 
a little bit more reasonable by uh, whopping 16% by doing this weird dog leg here. A couple of notes uh, on the flight plan. Uh, Vicenza uh, is the point where we suddenly speed up from probably an indicated airspeed of around about uh, 280, 290, maybe 300 if we're lucky. Uh, and we climb out of whatever our flight level is. It's saying 270 there. We won't be that high. Uh, up to flight level 450. Um, actually, we'll probably be cleared by air traffic straight up to flight level 600 at that point. And then uh, Amlon. Uh, well, we'll actually be outside of controlled airspace, ironically, when you get quite high over flight level 450. I think is uncontrolled somewhere around there anyway um because we're practically in space so then at amlon which is this waypoint oh dude i've done it again amlon which is this waypoint here <laughs> ah it's a professional operation we run here um that's the point where uh you see an m a lovely m n200 so that's mac 2.00 Hopefully a little bit quicker than that. Um, and yeah, and that's where we punch up into uh, the upper atmosphere. Divert is exactly the same. It's Paphos. Now, I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I'm pretty sure we can't land at Paphos. So let's just hope we're all right. It says on Beer Virtual's website uh, on the flight planning thing, the Bob, um, Paphos. But also, the route it gave us was not a Concorde route. So I think there's some weirdness going on there. Um, but yeah, I don't think we can land at Paphos. I might be wrong. Maybe we can. Um, so our diver would probably be Beirut or... I don't know whether back then Beirut was actually on the cards. It might not have been. Um, oh, it would have probably been Ben Gurion, actually. Oh, I've done it again. How many times? Uh, would have probably been Ben Gurion down here, um, rather than sort of getting up into the the dodginess of Turkey um, back in those days. Of course, you know, still not ideal, but it's better. So that's that. Um, now we do have to go into the advanced tab for for Conk and um, put in that we will be subsonic up until Kilo Papatango. Um, and then at that point, um, we can progress on towards Vicenza. And at Vicenza, uh, we can then start climbing up and going supersonic uh, and doing all the goodness. So that just adds in a bit more detail for PFPX to do its thing. And if we do all of that, we get an operational flight plan out the other side. And uh, here we go. So we'll have a zero fuel weight of... Um, a shred over 85 tons takeoff weight including fuel uh will be 134 just shy of 134 tons so you know reasonably heavy um and uh yeah our lovely flight plan flight level 220 then we do a bit of a climb up to 240 uh and then you can see here cruise at super mac 2 uh then we uh, light the fires and uh, give it the beans that's as much as I can do with PFPX. PFPX is really not geared up for Concorde, or at least I haven't got it set up to. I don't know whether it is capable. Because there's probably no reason why it wouldn't be if you set it up right. Um, so at this point, we switch over to actually a bit of freeware, um, which has been discontinued annoyingly, but I've just had to reinstall it, and it reinstalled absolutely fine. So... Uh, uh, right, let's try and stay in shot. But it's CPSX, so Concorde Performance System X. So if I just drop that down a smidge, there we go. Lovely. So fantastic bit of software, top-notch bit of software. Um, all the credits and everything. Yeah, Google it. Brilliant. Really, really good bit of kit. So let's take you through some of this. So let's just get a bit of framing you thing. So in here, you key in your departure airport, it then searches your, your folder for uh, flight plans, asks you to pick one, and that's what we've done. Uh, so London Heathrow, 
uh, EGLL. Uh, and you can see in here I've selected runway 27 left. And, and this is the one I'm, you know, that's more important um, because this is the one that's going to calculate our fuel. I know PFPX does it, but this is the one we're actually going to use because um, this is designed for Concorde. So it knows the runway lengths, blah de blah de blah. Um, and uh, we can put in restrictions, uh, namely the speed restriction below flight level 100 uh, of 250 knots. Um, we might get a buy on that up to 280. In fact, we almost certainly will get a buy up to 280 because 250 in Concorde is a little bit slow. Uh, you're a very, very nose up attitude on that. Uh, and it's quite tricky to maintain. And I've actually done this wrong. So subsonic steps departure until Vicenza. There we go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we can go supersonic until we need to be. So that, that tells... CPSX that we've got to be subsonic up until that waypoint. Uh, in fact, actually, it's not Vicenza, is it? It's Amlon. There we go. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, so that does all the things and the things. Uh, and that's important because our fuel burn is going to be through the roof until we get there to that waypoint. As you can see, this is the... <laughs> really? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, not only have we got cock, the waypoint cock, we've got the waypoint dick. <laughs> ah, such a child, such a child, brilliant, love it, 10 out of 10, best in class. So, there we go, anyway. Right, I'm just going to, let me just shrink this down a smidge, because I'm getting the feeling you're not going to see it anyway, so... Let's just get it all in screen. So there we go. So that's our route. We can flick over to destination uh, and key in some stuff for that. It um, integrates with Active Sky uh, anyway, or you can integrate it with other weather systems and or none at all or whatever. Uh, so it can tell you which runway it thinks you're going to be on and so on and so forth and take account for the winds. Um, and yeah, we'll be supersonic up to the destination. Uh, same for the alternate. You can put all the all the things in there, and then once you've done that, we go to the next page. Why is it not letting me drag that down? Well, okay, let's do it that way. Uh, and in here, um, we can press some buttons and get our thirty passengers, which is what PFBX told us. So that's what we use. Uh, and our baggage stroke freight, um, which was three, yeah, three point three something tons. Um, but the important thing is it gives us a zero fuel weight of eighty five tons plus ten kilos, um, and that's that's the important number that we need um, going forwards. What it also gives us is a zero fuel weight center of gravity of fifty three point four five percent mean aerodynamic cord uh, that is very very important and that has to be within limits because if we go if we run out of fuel that still needs to be a sensible number because then we'll be at our zero fuel weight otherwise the aircraft will be uncontrollable and we will not be able to land or when we land the, the thing will cock back onto its tail and we won't be able to push the nose down and you know dangerous things happen as you can see here that it plots your flight envelope um some of it's in french i'm afraid uh but this green circle is where we're sitting so we're right at the back end of what's allowable but we are within what is allowable that's the important thing to note here uh 53.45 that is a number we will use and we will need to key in when we're in the cockpit uh, when we do the flight so once you've done your loading and you can add ballast fuel and stuff but we it turns out we don't actually need that uh, we can go over to the fuel and this is where we see all the fuel tanks on concord 
lots and lots of them all spread about the delta wing and in various places um not the same by any stretch compared to you know other aircraft where you sort of have wing tanks center tank maybe a tail tank and that's it uh or at least in the cockpit it sort of lumps it all into one thing and just manages all the cross feeds for you very very different in concord um we have very fine control of what fuel's in what tank and pumping it in. We're able to move it around to get the balance right because when we go supersonic, the balance of the aircraft completely changes because the aerodynamics completely change, so we have to move fuel around and so on and so forth. And that when we get a flight envelope, looks something like that. And in this case, we're actually right on the forward edge of what is allow allowable. Um, but again, we are within what's allowable just gives us a slightly heavier nose um no slightly lighter nose slightly heavier tail so in here it's already worked out the amount of fuel we need so that was um that's based upon not only the flight plan but those limits where we said we're subsonic up until a certain point that all adds into the thing uh, and so on and so forth so it c calculates all these numbers for you the only things we can change are the extra fuel sort of like a contingency but it's on we already have a contingency but it's any extra we want to take with us um, and our expected taxi fuel now pfpx told us 1.4 tons for that i don't know um, but I've just keyed in 1.4 tons. It, it's a number, and as long as we're within limits, we should be all right. And as long as we don't have a big long hold uh, to depart, we should be all right. If we get given 27 right, that may become an issue. Um, but the Heathrow controls, whenever I've flown from there, have uh, played the game very much and given us the 27 left, which is what Concorde did. Um, so yes, there's our fuel, and we can see the tanks and so on and so forth. And these numbers, we'll be pumping fuel around when we're taxiing, and we'll be pumping it once we get in the air, and then pumping it again when we get supersonic, and then pumping it again when we decelerate. So it's all, you know, uh, all very dynamic. So once we've got those numbers and we're happy, the very last thing is this uh, takeoff card. Uh, and a landing card as well, but the takeoff card is the one we're interested in immediately. We'll have a reheat takeoff. That's important to tick that box rather than no. Um, we might get away with a non reheat takeoff because we're reasonably light. Reasonably light. Um, but pff, possibly not. But reheat takeoff was normal, so we're doing that. Um, inbuilt into this is the uh, the noise restrictions and the noise procedure for Concorde. So it had reheat, but then it turned it off um, after a minute, two minutes, can't remember. Um, uh, and then we we can't use reheat then because uh, of the noise con constraints. But doing all of this, uh, we get our V speeds. So we got our V one. VR V2. Um, we also get our theta 2 angle, so that's our initial climb angle of 13 degrees. Uh, and uh, we get our engine failure speeds as well. So, what we do if we have an engine failure uh, and what our, our safety speeds are with respect to that. This is going to be very important. We'll be keying all of these numbers in when we do the flight. Very, very important. And we've also got a landing card, um, so very, very similar, uh, just this is for approach. So it's given us our VREF, that's really the key one, uh, and our VTT. So there's, this is our approach speed. Uh, 158 will be our touchdown speed effectively. Um, realistically, we're going to be circuiting at around about 220 knots. Uh, and we're not going to really decelerate from that until we, we are locked on to the runway. On final approach uh, at which point we can you know we can bring the speed back and do the Concorde thing where you're coming in with an absolutely ridiculous angle of attack 
Um, really, really interesting stuff. We'll talk about the aerodynamics of how that's possible without it stalling. Just to give you a nugget, it isn't without it stalling. It has stalled. We are post-stall, but because of the delta wing, it does some funky stuff with the aerodynamics. Really interesting. We'll talk about that in flight. And that's it. Um, and once you've done all of these, you can click the export to Concorde. In fact, I'm going to do that because I've changed something. And it sends all your load and fuel to Concord uh, and saves your ADU cards. So no GPS on Concord. Can't just key it straight into a GPS or into a flight computer. No bueno. Um, it, it can't do that. Uh, so it uses an inertial navigation system. Um, something I'm reasonably good at using. Um, quite familiar with it from the 707 and the 74200. Um, and Concord used exactly the same system. Um, so we'll be able to talk through that when we do the flight. Quite complex and quite interesting because it drifts. It drifts like a brute. So we have to do certain things to try and uh, um, get it back on track, as it were. So that's it. Look forward to the flight interested to hear your thoughts are you excited for it down below in the doobly-doo and uh i'll see you when we're actually sat in the cockpit of old pointy doodles <laughs>